I'm sorry if you hate this background because I'm starting to hate it too. <laughs> it's not a nice background, I'm aware. It's supposed to be kind of funny, but I don't know if it's funny enough for it to be worth having. Um, nah, let's just uh, get started with the video. So this video is supposed to be more educational no pun intended, than my other Swedish videos. Um, it's not gonna be like a ha ha ha, oh you Sweden kind of video, because it's not really funny. It's just that a lot of you want to know about boring things, in my opinion, boring things. And today, today's video is gonna be about one of those things, and that is the Swedish school system. So I thought I would go through it from when we were babies to when we stopped going to school. And that is, of course, at different times for different people. I don't know everything about everything and I might miss some options that you might have, but I'm gonna do my best to explain and go through the Swedish school system. So you're born and then you become a few years. Sometimes you go to preschool, sometimes you don't. In my case, I didn't. Um, I'm also a special case because I actually started first grade one year ahead of everyone else my age. The reason, I don't know, I wasn't like extra super smart, it was just like how it worked out. My younger brother did the same thing, but it's not super common, it just happens sometimes. When I was, how old was I? Five or six? I think I was six when I started first grade. Usually I think you're seven. You can also go to kindergarten before, but it's not mandatory. I mean, I didn't go to kindergarten, but you can of course go to kindergarten. And then this long, long period of your life starts where you go to what's called grundskola. And directly translated, I guess that is like base school or foundation school. It puts the foundation of your learning into your life. And that is the first nine years of school. And this Grundskola is divided up into three parts. And these parts are different stages, basically. They're called the lower stage, the middle stage, and the high stage. <laughs> uh, in Swedish, lågstadie, mellanstadie, and högstadie. And they're not split up in any advanced way, just one, two, three, lågstadie, four, five, six, mellanstadie, and seven, eight, nine, högstadie. And when you're in ninth grade, it's time to start thinking about what program you want to take in what we call gymnasium. And this, I guess, is where it starts to differ a lot from the US school system, because we don't have high school. Um, what you would call high school in Sweden is ninth grade and then one, two, three of the gymnasium. Uh, gymnasium is a three-year program that is not mandatory, but I would say that like 99% of kids actually go to gymnasium because it's just a part of your, your schooling, I guess. Um, but this is where it becomes legal to stop going to school. There are so many different programs to choose from when it comes to the gymnasium. There are two standard directions you can go, kind of, and then there are loads of like programs that are not related to these at all. But there are the social study programs and the natural science programs. Um, either you can just go to the natural science program, clean cut, nothing special, or the social studies program, clean cut, nothing special. And the way these two differ the most is that obviously the natural science focuses more on science. You take chemistry, physics, biology, all of those courses, while in in the social studies program you take natural science as a subject and you learn about the basics of all the things that the natural science program goes more into depth of. And for the social science, social studies program, you obviously go more into depth of history, Swedish, um, social studies, all of those subjects that maybe the natural science just touches on a little bit less. And both programs obviously take math, while the natural science part they take more advanced math, and the social studies part takes just less advanced math. But of course, what's so good, I guess, about um, the programs you choose is that even if you choose a natural science program and you love history, 
Later in the three years, you can actually add a history course onto your program if that's what you want to do. So it's a little bit flexible. What's the difference between choosing these two then? Well, after the gymnasium, when it's time to apply to universities and stuff like that, then you need certain courses to be able to apply to certain programs. It's very difficult for a social studies student that hasn't added on special courses to apply to go to med school, for example, because they don't have what we call behörighet, which means um, access to those universities, pretty much. Um, this is nothing that you can't fix afterwards. I'll, I'll get into that later, but you basically need to think. That's why so many kids stress over the choice of gymnasium in ninth grade, because they really do think it's life or death for their future education, and you have to choose the right program to be able to get into the right university and all that stuff. And of course it helps. It really helps to choose the program that you want to study further in university, but it's not life or death. And you can actually later on add courses even after gymnasium, so that you can apply for the right university program for you. So what are some of the other gymnasium programs that you can take? Well, personally, I took social studies slash media communications. And they're also like clean cut media communications programs. Um, there are economy. There's like clean cut economy and there's social studies slash economy. Um, you can take social studies slash uh, God, it's so difficult to translate these. I only know them in Swedish. Um, like sports, if you want to do sports in high school, gymnasium, uh, you can take one of those programs. You can go to special, like I could go to a floorball high school if I wanted to. Electricity high school, you can, if you want to be an electrician, is that what they're called? Uh, you can go to a high school for that. It just really depends on where you live and what your area can offer, because not all places offer the same things. There's music high school, obviously, there's art high school as well. Not that the entire high school is for art or music or economy, but the programs have like special, there are special programs for all these things. And it's really, really nice in my opinion, because I, I chose natural science and then I took natural science for six months and I was like, I don't want to do this. And then I changed to media communications and that was amazing. I absolutely loved it. And it's just a way of making high school or gymnasium more exciting in my opinion. And I really like it. However, it does put unnecessary pressure on the kids that they think that they have to choose right and the choice becomes such a big blown up thing and it's just, it's not life or death. Another thing that is important to mention is that you apply to these programs through the grades you get in the high level or high stage of Grundskola. So in ninth grade you get grades and those grades are used to get into the program of your choice. So if you don't have great grades, the chances of you getting into your program might decrease. For example, getting into great natural science programs, you need to have amazing grades. And if you want to get into schools that have like, I don't know, in my town, it was like the luxury school, great reputation. That's where everyone wants to go. You have to have amazing grades. And then there's the other natural science program school. And basically anyone got in there because the level of the education was a little bit lower. It matters, but then again, it doesn't matter because at both schools, you will learn basically the same things. It's just maybe a little bit of prestige involved in getting into the super fancy school, but pressure. It puts a lot of pressure on the kids. Now, you have chosen your program, you go to three years of gymnasium, and then you graduate! Woohoo! So the graduation after gymnasium is the big deal where everybody wears their little sailor hats and you're like dressed in white and you're like, woo, graduation. So what do you do after high school? You can do whatever the fuck you want. You do not have to go to school ever again, or you can keep going to school for like seven years, like my older brother did because he went to med school and he, last year he finished med school and... He had been there for fucking seven years. And I chose to go to a university in Malmö. And basically you can just choose whatever the heck you want to do at this point. If you want to just work 
that's perfectly fine. If you want to work for three years and then go into school, that's fine. But if you do end up wanting to apply for a university, there are three ways, I think, three ways of getting into a program. Some programs only offer two ways, but the program I applied to offered three different ways of getting in. The first way, your grades from gymnasium, high school. If you get great grades, your odds of getting into your program increases. You can also do this thing called Högskoleprovet, which is basically the university test. It's not mandatory at all, but it could give you an advantage when applying to a university. You go to this place like two times a year. I think there are two opportunities per year to do this test. So you go there. If, you're, if you want to, you can study before. I didn't study before because I was like, fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> um, but a lot of people study before because if you don't have the grades you need to get into your program, this test can save your ass. So if it's really important to you, you can study before and you can like look at old tests to kind of get an idea of what's going to go on. You do a Swedish part, you do a English part and you do a math part. I think those are the three parts. And basically it's just like common knowledge crap. You sit there for hours and hours during one day, do all these tests and I mean, yeah, it is difficult. It's not something where like you get a plus and then you're good to go. Um, the score, the maximum score is 2.0 and the worst score is obviously 0.0. <laughs> um, and I got a 1.0 the first time I did it. I've done it two times. I got a 1.0 the first time. It doesn't get more average than that. I guess it might be a little bit, I don't even know if it's above average or not. If you get a good score, I mean, 2.0 is obviously like, there are some people every year who get 2.0 and it's like, oh my God, you got a 2.0, oh, you're a genius. Um, and then you, if you get a 2.0, you can pick and choose of any university you want, basically. Um, Unless you're going to be a doctor, because then there might be more people with 2.0, but whatever. Um, so this can save you. If you get a good score on your test, you don't need to apply through your grades. You can just apply through the score of the test, which is ridiculous, because knowing Swedish, English and math and getting a good score on this test does not mean that you're fit to be a doctor, a teacher, an artist, a graphic designer, anything. It's just so random. They're just like, okay, so answer these questions and lottery, if you make it and you actually guess right, you get to go to the school you want. While people who struggle through all of high school and just happen not to get the grades they want, who would be perfect teachers and perfect doctors and all of that stuff, they just don't get in because fuck them. But there is a third way to get in and this is mostly used in like artsy fartsy programs such as graphic design i've talked about this before on my channel <laughs> you can get in through doing a test like a portfolio test pretty much for my graphic design program i had to make a book about myself so i just uh, illustrated some stuff cut a little bit glued it together book about myself so cool sent it in and i got in so the test I took, fuck that. The grades I had been fighting for, for three years, fuck them. And I just made a little book about myself and I got in. Doesn't make school feel useless at all. But not all, of course, not all university programs offer this third choice of doing a test the portfolio thingy. It's just some of them do. And then hopefully you get in you might get in as a reserve and then you get accepted once someone else drops out. That can happen. Yeah. And then you just go to school or don't go to school and just YOLO. And if your gymnasium grades were not up to the standard they had to be and you later in life realize, but I want to be a doctor so bad or I want to be this or that or that. And I didn't know when I was fucking 15 what I wanted to be when I grow up. There is this thing called Convux and Convux is where you can take courses and like better your grades and all those kind of things later in life. So if you're like 25 and you fucked up in gymnasium and you're like, oh, I don't care about this stuff, F in everything. And then you're in your 25, you're like, but I want to study it at the university. You can go to Convux, take your courses, 
up your grades and you might have a better shot of getting into the university program of your choice. And then after university, there are so many options. Maybe you want to do a master's degree. Maybe you want to do some other crap. I don't know. Um, there are many other things to do, but this is like the standard mainstream way of doing it pretty much. So I'm not going to go into details of all the options you can choose later on, but this is basically sw the Swedish school system and how it works. Um, enough rambling. This was a short or very long introduction to the Swedish school system. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, somehow super duper one guys. I will see you later.